<laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Glad everybody's here and ready to listen to the Lord and worship together and just spend time together because we're Christians. We all have lots of things in common and we have lots of differences, but the thing that's important is uh, those of us who have been uh, rescued from our sins and given the gift of righteousness, we're in the family of God and it is good to be in the family of God. We welcome you. Welcome everybody online who's tuning in. I hope if you don't have a church family, you'll have a chance to come out and spend time with us as well. But we're grateful everyone can can make it out. And uh, I've been praying this week that the Lord would use today in our hearts and keep us uh, persevering like we're, uh, we've been reading about in Second Peter that will be stirred up by way of remembrance. And we'll just be, that's what will happen this morning. So, welcome. Get my microphone on here. All right, I'm on. <laughs> well, good morning. morning. Announcements. I'm up here, so I've got one ready for us. Uh, uh, your morning laughter. And I've been doing some studying. Where, and this is kind of a serious question, where was Solomon's temple located? On the side of his head. Rod got it. <laughs> Any announcements? Mary Singles will be meeting at the church this Thursday, and we'll meet here at 10 o'clock. Don't go to the coffee shop. And we're going to uh, have a day trip to Newton, and we're going to do a sing-along at Comfort Care Homes, and then we're going to go out to eat. If you need a ride from Marion, just give me a call, and I'll pick you up. But most of us are from nearer the church, so that's why we're going to leave from here. Ten o'clock, and we have some songbooks ready. And you don't have to be a good singer. You just have to make a joyful noise. Good morning, everyone. Uh, March 18th, Beast Feast is approaching. I'm going to send the clipboard back around if somebody missed out the opportunity. If you'd like to sign up and, and help us out, we sure appreciate it. So I'll, I'll send that around. We have a missions meeting at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. And it'll be in the fellowship hall. And right following that, we have women's Bible study at 7 o'clock, and it'll be downstairs. So, I've got two announcements. One, uh, and I apologize that I didn't make this announcement earlier, but this coming Wednesday morning at 7 is a, is a little breakfast. During the Lent season, the different churches take turns hosting a breakfast in the morning just for like, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and so we're going to be doing that this Wednesday here in the Fellowship Hall at 7 a.m., just a time to have breakfast together and, and pray for different people that are uh, practicing Lent and uh, share the word just a short time together. And then the second announcement is that the Missions Committee has became aware of a situation, a woman named Debbie Olke, she's had it she's she's had ms for many years but it's progressively getting worse and worse and it's at a point now where she needs a new wheelchair and uh, this is not a matter of just getting a, a frill or a convenience like it's she needs something narrower to be able to get through rooms in her house uh, that's mechanized and uh, and so it's it's quite expensive and so we're collecting money to help her buy this wheelchair i think it's like a five thousand or six thousand dollar wheelchair. I'm sorry. She. Yeah, it's a it's. Okay, well, we could talk about that afterwards. But if you do want to give towards it, the AOMC is also giving towards it, and you can earmark it uh, for Olki or give to the AOMC in the same way. But uh, we just want to be able to help them out and bless them. 
Uh, they are believers that, that have been serving the Lord in various ways, and, and it's a good opportunity for us to show them love. So. That's right. And then also at Administrative Council this last time, the Ad Board, we were talking about getting some new playground equipment, and we were looking at prices on new sets and going, this is ridiculous. Uh, if, but we do see some new sets once in a while around, some nice things, you know. And so just, we just ask that if you just keep your eyes open, and if you come across a nice uh, used set of playground equipment that we could put out here at the church, uh, let us know and, and uh, be something we can we can add for the, for the kids of the church, so keep that in mind. And then uh, Lucas and I were talking this morning, I'll just go ahead and share, uh, we were talking this morning that uh, uh, the, the official name of the church is Only Church. That's our legal name, Only Church. But you'll also see Only Bible Church. Uh, and and that, that name uh, is, is a name that we've, we've uh, taken on. That was actually, we were considering that name originally from the very beginning, uh, but we just went very simple, only church for the legalities, and that is our legal name. But if you're on Facebook, you'll see only Bible church. And if you look and go, well, what church is that? Well, that's us. Uh, we wanted to, uh, it, you know, we've added that so when people see that, they go, oh yeah, that's that church that believes in the Bible. And they're based on the Bible. And that's what we are. We are the only Bible church. So there we go. Uh, even though we are still legally only church, if you write your check, you can still be only church. Uh, although if you write only Bible church, that's okay. We'll get there. And just a reminder, after Sunday school, we'll gather for our picnic, followed by games. We'll eat around 12 o'clock and... We'll start around 12 o'clock and then 30, 45 minutes to eat or whenever you're finished and then we'll break out the games and you can stay as long as you want. Any other announcements? I just now thought of it, Rod. That's the ABC church. Yeah, that's right. ABC. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah, simple as ABC. Any birthdays this morning? Man. We almost have an angel cake here, it's so light. <laughs> It's a good thing I'm hard of hearing, because if they were given their age, I didn't hear. Clifford, you got... 54 years married. All right. Well, let's start off with that one. Anyone beat 54? 54, 54. All right. Let's sing happy, or happy anniversary to Clifford Neville. Yeah. <laughs> Happy anniversary and happy birthdays. So at this time, we will quiet our hearts and, and listen to what God has to say for us this morning.
Please stand with me and we will join together. I decided after, as the computer guy, and sometimes I'll catch it and sometimes I won't with Pastor Brian picking the call to worships as to whether it's unison or responsive, so this one's responsive. Lord, Holy One, have mercy on us. We confess our sins to you. We have fallen short of your glory. Without your mercy and grace, we would be dust. Print now, Lord, be near you. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel the proper conviction and repentance for our sin. Help us by your Spirit to have the strength to overcome the enemy. Thank you, Lord, that Easter is coming. Death has no sin, no victory because of Jesus. Thank you for rescuing us. Help keep us, keep the weight and the joy of this season in our hearts as we move through the next several weeks. Help us bear the good, the good fruit of your spirit. We wait beautiful in the restoration of all things. Help us long and look forward to that day and let it come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. That's a good one. Praise band, come on forward. Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in the sanctuary, those of you who are online as well, and those of you who are spinning in a chair right now. I see you, yeah. I can see all things up there in the balcony. Yeah. yeah. From Psalm 28, six through nine. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them for us.
And all God's people said, Amen. From Revelation 4, 9 through 10. We have some feedback. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being.
Romans 5, 6 through 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for us. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We've had lots going on this last week. Some have gone through heartache and pain and sorrow. Some have had <coughs> relief, celebrations, excitement. Lord, wherever we are, meet us right here and now. Lord, I just hear all of these, all the singing 
And I can't wait to go to heaven, Lord, and get to hear the angels sing and get to join in where we don't sing out of tune and none of us are unsure of the words. And Lord, just be with us in this time. Be with Pastor Brian. Help him to speak the words that you have given to him. Lord, just be with us in this time. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Kids, come on down. There we go. Oh, Inslee! Let the big guy get through. Morning, Wes. Have a seat. <laughs> seat on the seat. How's everybody this morning? Good. Good. Tired. <coughs> yeah, I'm tired. Oh, that's because you go and go and go and go and go and go and go. Everybody okay? Yeah. yeah. You are kind of quiet. I'm sorry to hear that. I had a good night's sleep. I had some prayer warriors praying for me. I had a good night's sleep. So question. What are some things that you should take your time doing? Praying, sleeping, Titus? Sleeping and playing. playing. What? Um, drawing. 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 Should take your time drawing. drawing. No. no. Levi? What do you think? To pray to Jesus? To pray to Jesus? Okay. Some of you are ahead of me. That's okay. All right. So some things you should take your time doing. Is that what you're, you're telling me? Titus? Titus. Okay. All right. Is our timer up there? It's on the back? Okay. All right. Here's what I need everybody to do. All my people here are down in front. Are you listening? Got a challenge for you. Okay. There are a bunch of people in here. It looks like there's 134 of us in here. That's a, no, I, we had an official counter. We have an official, an official counter. I mean, he, he counts everybody who's in here. So I'm not telling you. Then you might duck and you wouldn't be counted. But we have 134 people, it says today. All right, so here's the deal. Now, obviously, that includes all of you. So, that, so approximately 120. All right, here's your challenge, Richard. 400 kids? 400 in the whole United States. All right, Dexter, here's your challenge. I'm only going to give it once. In the next 30 seconds. You need to greet everybody in this building. Yes. All right? Now, obviously, you need to be careful about how you're doing that. Obviously, you need to be careful, right? But I need you to shake the person's hand, tell them good morning, and tell them who you are. All right? And if they, if they want to tell you who they are, that's perfect, too, okay? But we've got these people, and then we have the people in the back. Now, I think, just for safety's sake, we are not going to the balcony. <laughs> Do you understand me? We are not going to the balcony, all right? Just for safety purposes. So then they can come down to us. No, not this time. But that's a good idea. Okay. All right, so are you ready? Yes. Because our timer person is going gonna, is gonna to hit the button. When you hear the timer go off, or if you have greeted everybody, then you need to come and sit down. But when the timer goes off, you, you have to come back, all right? Even if you're in a deep conversation, you still have to come back. You have to tell them thank you, but I've got to go. All right, so you need to greet. Sit down. Nobody's told you anything yet. Um, so you have to shake their hand like this. I like I look at Bexley. Said, "Hey, Bexley, I'm Brenda. Good morning." 
and she's going to grin at me. All right, so that's what you need to do. Now, obviously, we can't all go down the center aisle, so some of you might have to go on the side. Please watch the things on the wall, okay? Just be cool, all right? Are you ready? You may stand up. This is not a race. We're not running against each other. We're not running. Richard, did you catch that? We're not running, okay? Sorry, put a damper on that. Running is my... Not in the church. Not in the church. Let's run fire. All right, ready? And you may walk, go. Go. Nope, nope, sorry. Sorry, nope, we gotta shake hands. We gotta shake hands, we gotta physically go. Gotta go, gotta go, Dexter. Time is up. Time is up. Thank you. Time is up. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Okay. Where do you sit? How about right there? There you go, baby. Have a seat, Richard. That works. All right. So, did you learn anything about anybody? Friendly. They're friendly? Yes. Okay. I learned about them. Yeah. Did, did, uh, did, 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 did anybody, anybody make you feel really, really special, like you really want to spend some more time with them? Yes. Really? Like just now? You like meeting new people? Okay. All right. So, did you get everybody in the building? No. What? No. You didn't get everybody in the building. You got everybody in the building. You shook hands with everybody in this building, in this church, right here. I did that. So, yeah, it's kind of impossible to do that in 30 seconds, isn't it? Okay, so some of you had it earlier. When we pray, do you think God wants us to do that? Do you think God wants to say, hey, God, it's Brenda. I've had a great day. Thanks. Bye. No. You don't think God wants you to do that? Why not? He wants you to actually spend time. Yeah. Spend time with him? Talk he wants me to actually him. talk to him and listen? What How come? To the stairs. Because we, we need to get up there. How come? How come we need to do that? Because um, um, yeah. if you don't, that's kind of disrespectful. You think it's kind of disrespectful? Yeah. Okay. God takes the time to, to listen to us, doesn't he? Yeah. And he I'm wants fine. to know what's on our heart. And so... Max, so when we talk to God, he wants, to have our, he wants us to have our full attention on him, Wes, to be fully, fully engaged with him. Okay, Richard? So when we're talking to God, he doesn't want us to do that 30-second thing. He wants us to sit down, and he wants us to talk with him and tell him what's on our hearts. And then, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, pray for different people. Okay. But we need to be sure that we're focusing on God and not on our phones or not on the TV set or not on what we're going to be doing this afternoon, but right now when we're talking to him, okay? So let's do that right now. Let's bow our heads. Let's put our hands in our own laps, okay? And close our eyes and turn off our voices. Turn off our voices, okay? God, it says in your word, great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for how amazing and awesome you are and that you have all of these people in your sight and that you want to listen to every one of us. And you don't want to just hear a 30-second, hey, Lord, it's been a good day, thanks. You want to hear from our hearts. You want us to, to get in touch, to focus on you and to let you know what's in our hearts and to praise you and to give you the honor and the glory that you deserve. Thank you, Lord, for each one of these kids, Lord. This is the future right here. And we just pray that those who work with these kids, those who love these kids, would do everything they can to bring them closer to you. In your son's precious and holy name, amen. And you know, while I was...
Well, thank you for that, Brenda. Uh -huh. Now is the time where we've come in our, our worship to give. If you will bow with me in prayer, we, we will go to the Lord. Lord, we, we come to you again. It is just so awesome that we're able to connect with the creator of the universe and, and that you want to hear our voices, Lord. Lord, I'd, we've had it preached here at Olney that something's going to start right here in Olney. And Lord, we have people that are on fire that have a passion for you, Lord. Help us to be willing to give for the mission of this church that we may not just stay within these four walls, but to reach every ends of the earth. Lord, be with us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I will take the time to share prayer requests and praise God for answered prayers. And uh, the Lord has been showing himself faithful to answer prayers, and I think there's some really faithful prayer ministers out among us. And so I think you can send in your prayer requests with confidence that they will be prayed for. And one one note here, Amy Plett has is giving, passing on a, a joy that she's thankful for. She said, thank you for your prayers for my joint pain. Five weeks ago, my primary doctor put me on a medicine they give to fibromyalgia patients. Thanks to this medicine, I sleep at night and didn't, don't have any pain. So praise the Lord for that. Remember, she had medicine that worked, but then the insurance wouldn't cover any more of it, or she used up all that she could. And, and so that was a big concern of hers, so praise the Lord for that answered prayer. Be praying for my father-in-law, Tim Atwood. He is in AFib currently, and he's at the hospital. He, he got medicine, right, to call, get things in the right order, but still waiting to take some tests, find, find out, out why, why it happened again. again. And uh, uh, so, so be, be praying, praying for, for his health, health for, for his heart, heart and, and also, also just for his peace, peace of mind that this doesn't... End end you know, he doesn't feel too much stress and anxiety over this, and uh, that the Lord uh, will bring him to be healed. Pay, pray for Katie Zerker has to take a three-hour glucose test tomorrow morning to check for uh, uh, gestational diabetes. Did I say that word right? Okay. Uh, so be praying for that and that uh, there that she, she won't, won't have, have that, that issue. issue. Uh, uh, be, be praying, praying for, for our, our friend, friend, and also, also I guess this is an announcement, too. Rick Garth is, moved, sadly, moving, moving to, to Texas, Texas, so this is his last 
Sunday here, aside from any visits he may pay us in the future, and we pray that he will come and visit us when he has the chance. But he's going down to help his family take care of his mother, and he's moving in there. He's making a big sacrifice. So be praying for Rick, uh, just that everything is everything happens smoothly and without problems. And also just pray the Lord's blessing on Rick and his life as he's making this big change and this big move uh, out of, on behalf of his mother. And then also pray for Peyton Davis. This is John and Lori's granddaughter. She is has hip surgery Tuesday morning. And so be praying that the doctors and nurses have both skill and wisdom. And then pray for Peyton that she has healing and recovery. And probably as well, uh, just that she doesn't have uh, any stress or an anxiety as that day is coming up. I'm sure that could be a scary thing for a young girl. So uh, be praying for all these things. And... Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and, and pray and that lead us in prayer. Please join me praying in your hearts for these things as well. And let's try to remember these throughout the week. Father, we thank you for being a good God who answers prayers and who listens to us and who uses your wisdom in answering our prayers in the way that is best. And I, I pray that you would help us to understand when our requests don't match up with the way you've answered our prayers. We pray that we would keep our hope that you are good and you do good things and that your ways are best. And we'll remember the promise you've made uh, that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And that when we face trials and problems, we won't doubt that, but trust that in the end, uh, it will work out. And we thank you for answering our prayers for Amy. Uh, she had this trial of, of uh, dealing with pain and with no apparent hope. But, Lord, you've provided medicine that will that is giving her the ability to sleep at night without pain. We thank you for answering the many prayers that we prayed for her. And we thank you that she has relief from her pain as well. We pray for Tim. I pray that you would keep, restore his health, Lord. I pray that uh, this won't be a problem that he has to face again, but that as he's waiting uh, treatment, Lord, that you would give the doctors wisdom as they analyze the problem and, and assess the best course of action. And pray that uh, you would also give uh, Dad just a, a peace of heart and a peace of mind that he, he would be able to feel your closeness to him as he goes through this difficult time. We also pray for Katie and her glucose test tomorrow. We pray that uh, the results will um, be uh, good and also that this test won't be too difficult or uh, uh, um, uncomfortable, Lord. Just pray that all things will be good and that that baby will come at the right time and uh, you would just grant health and safety throughout her, her pregnancy, Lord. We thank you for the friendship that you have given to us with Rick. And uh, I, I thank you just for the short time that I've got to know him. And uh, Lord, we pray for him now as he's making this big move. I pray that you would bless him. As he is making a sacrifice, what's comfortable for what is best. I pray that you give him wisdom as he makes decisions affecting the future. And I pray that you would give him uh, friends in Texas and godly people that build him up in love and someone that he can invest in as well. I pray that you would, you would just use him for your glory. And I pray that we would... Uh, be able to see him in the future, that he'll have the chance and opportunity and ability to come and visit. And uh, we trust you in your sending him away, Lord, that it will be good. And we just pray that you'll give him grace through this time. And finally, Lord, we pray for Peyton uh, that her surgery will be successful and go just as planned and expected or even better. Pray each doctor and each nurse will be well-rested and ready for the job ahead of them. 
on Tuesday and not be distracted. Pray that you would grant them skill and wisdom in the job that they're doing. And we thank you for your providing health and, and uh, care through these, these means of grace that you've provided, Lord. And we pray that Peyton won't be stressed or scared, that you would give her comfort and that you would heal her and her recovery will be quick and, uh, and, and uh, comfortable, Lord, as comfortable as it can be. And we pray these things uh, trusting you, looking forward to you answering our prayers. And we, we hand this service over to you as well. And the Sunday school classes that follow, Each t I pray for each teacher that you give them the words to speak and teach and each person participating in the classes following the preaching that it would be just a time of growth and, and uh, Holy Spirit-led interaction among your people. I pray that each of us would respond to your word this morning in the way you want us to, myself included, that I would uh, take your warnings and your instructions and take them to heart. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus and his authority as he's taught us, and we also pray the prayer that he's taught us, and, and uh, uh, we pray it uh, with our hearts to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we read the scripture this morning. It comes from 2 Peter. Uh, I've got it bookmarked here. 2 Peter 2, 1 through 16. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and, blem they are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of the prophet. And all God's people said, Amen. you may be seated. The title of today's, this morning's sermon is, Remember the Fate of the Unrighteous. And we're in Second Peter <clears throat> We're in the middle of the second chapter. Second Peter is only three chapters long, and uh, we're in the very middle of the second chapter. So we're in the very middle of the book, and we're going to be looking at, at verses 10 through 16. And uh, this, this is, we gather together in the, in the mornings on Sunday to sit before God's word and uh, uh, this, this isn't a time, time for me to just, just tell you my thoughts and think, tell you things that I think are important, but we submit to God's word. And uh, I've 
I'm preaching through Second Peter. I probably wouldn't have chosen this passage if it was just about me wanting to share things that I want to talk about. But I've spent time studying God's Word and praying that the Holy Spirit would show me what to teach and, and what we can learn from this passage. And so I do come before you this morning with confidence that this is what God wants us to hear this morning. And I think the important thing about this passage, verses 10 through 16, we're talking about false teachers again. And then the rest of chapter 2 finishes up one more part about false teachers. And I didn't want to get into that next passage to finish up the chapter because it's got some, some difficult things to really we need to give our attention to and, and give it some attention. But then into chapter 3, it starts talking about the day of the Lord coming and Jesus' return. So the book begins talking about Jesus and being uh, children of God, and it ends talking about Jesus. So I don't, we can't lose track of that as we're looking at these false teachers. And we don't want to look at this idea of false teaching and make ourselves feel good about ourselves and say, you know, like point our fingers out there. There's bad things going on out there, but we have it all together. That's not why Peter is saying this. Uh, Peter is bringing this up. He's writing to God's people to warn them. And as, we, as I've read this book many times, it, as I've been studying this in these weeks, I've been reading the book, the letter, several times. And, and uh, he's not giving us instructions to go out there and stop these false teachers. I don't see that in the book. What he's telling us is, what, you watch out that you are not taken advantage of, that you are not fooled that you don't follow their example and, and submit to their teachings. So we want to keep that in mind as we look at this passage. And remember, it, in chapter 1, verse 3, he said, His divine power, God's divine power, has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. And so the idea is God wants to bless His people through the knowledge of Him, and then he gave us this list of godly characteristics that he wants us to add to our faith. We start with faith, trust in God, and then we add the, the virtues and the self-control and steadfastness and godliness and love. And uh, in this way, we begin to take part in the divine nature. So it's this upward ascent towards the divine nature, becoming more like God. And so that's the idea of the book. And then this warning is... Or you could listen to false teachers, and you're going to go in the opposite direction. That's his warning here, is who are you going to listen to? You've got God's word and his message that will only benefit and bless you and lead to true life. Or you've got these messages from false teachers, and he's saying, remember these things. Don't forget. He's saying, he said, I, you already know a lot of this, but I want to keep reminding you of it. And then at the conclusion of last week, we read, if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell uh, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment day, and if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and if... By turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making then them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard, then... The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. So, uh, he's, through the, those three examples, those examples he gave, he's contrasting the righteous and the ungodly over and over and over. And he says, if God took care of all those things, he knows how to rescue and how to punish. And then he, he said, especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions and despise authority. Okay, so he's saying God knows how to punish the, the wrongdoers. And the, our sermon this morning is remember the fate of the unrighteous. And God is, Peter pointed out, God knows how to hold those people under punishment. 
And so the choice is ours. Who are we going to follow? God and his word, maybe it's not popular, or maybe it's uncomfortable, or maybe it, it doesn't sit well with me, and I, I find it hard to submit to it, but I know what God, where God says that leads. Or false teachers that don't follow the way of the word of God. Uh, th these are our choices. So now he's saying, especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions and despise authority. So we look in verse 11, it, move on in verse 11, it's talking about those people. It says they're bold and willful. They do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. So now this kind of set, sets the tone for the rest of this, these verses we're going to look at. He's just describing these ungodly people, the unrighteous ones. And so our warning is we don't want to follow people like this, but there's also the warning that we don't want to be, we don't want to be these people. We don't want to be the ones who want to tweak God's word to make it more fit, fit in with our lifestyle and the choices we want to make. We could be those false teachers. Uh, the false teachers that he warned about were the, the children, children of Israel. Israel. They, they were God's people, people that were rescued out of Egypt, Egypt and then they turned, turned from the way. And, and we, 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 so, so we, we wanted, wanted to make sure that, that we ourselves aren't similar to them or following some of their examples and we don't follow them. So let's keep that in mind as we look at these descriptions and instructions of who these people are. And uh, this is kind of an odd verse. It's, it's strange and it, I thought about it a lot, meditated and prayed a lot about it. I think we can get some insight into this. He's saying that they're bold and they're willful. So they're, they're trying to lift themselves up. And they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. All right, so that's a description of someone that is trying to build themselves up and make themselves bigger than what they are, right? And he already said in chapter, earlier in chapter 2 that they're trying to take advantage of people by... Um, by exploiting them. So that fits in with this description. They want to exploit other people. They want to build themselves up. And whereas they should tremble to blaspheme glorious ones, but they don't. And then he contrasts them with the holy angels. Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. So they blaspheme glorious ones, whereas angels, they don't uh, pronounce a blasphemous judgment against those glorious ones. And uh, Jude, in his letter, he writes something very similar, and I think it's worth comparing as, as we think about what this might mean. Jude says, yet in like manner, these people, he's talking about false teachers also, these people also, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. All right, so he's talking about what is, who are these glorious ones that they are blaspheming? Peter and Jude both mentioned them. These false teachers blaspheme glorious ones. Well, the next verse gives us some insight. In verse 9. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, all right, so remember Peter said not even angels do this. Well, now he's, we're talking about a specific angel, Mike, Michael, the archangel. So it's a high-ranking angel. Contending with the devil was disputing about the body of Moses. He did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, you can spend time this week thinking about what they're talking about, the body of Moses, and there's plenty of resources where you can look up and find study Bibles that talk about what that contention was about. But for our purpose this morning, what I want to see is the example that Jude gave about an angel not blaspheming glorious one is the Michael not giving a blasphemous judgment against the devil. So I believe when Peter is saying that they don't tremble and blaspheme the glorious ones, he's not necessarily saying good and godly ones. He's just saying glorious ones. Remember, the devil is an angel of light, and he can, he can disguise himself. And I, I think the point what he's getting at is that we are creatures, we're humans, made out of dirt, right, from Genesis 1. And angels are not creatures made out of dirt. Angels are some sort of bigger and more powerful cre creation 
Some of them are very holy angels and pure. And some of those angels have fallen and become very wicked and evil. But they still are not creatures of dirt. They're still glorious ones in a sense. And I think that's what Peter and Jude were both talking about. That's what makes the most sense when you compare those passages. And so they are blaspheming beings that are higher than them. Spirit beings. Not that they're good. Uh, but the archangel Michael, he, he had reason to rebuke Satan, uh, the devil. But he, he, instead of him doing it and him saying, I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, I'll just rebuke you. He said, the Lord rebuke you. So that's in contrast to these false teachers that don't feel, they, don't, they, don't, they can build themselves up. They don't hesitate. Whereas the holy angel Michael, he hesitated. He said, I, who am I? I can't rebuke these glorious ones. The Lord, let him rebuke you. And these false teachers, they blaspheme glorious ones. And I think as we looked at the contrast, those stories about uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, there was angels involved in those stories. And uh, it mentioned the fallen angels and these false teachers. And I think when you put it together, the idea is that you've got the two paths, the way of the true prophets and the way of the false prophets, the false teachers. And one is the way of God, and one is the way of these unrighteous fallen angels. And so we've got this, the whole world is this story of um, God versus his enemies. And God is going to prevail, and God has all authority and all power. Uh, just like we know this of Jesus, but uh, Jesus did, he, he didn't exercise that authority. Well, he, you know, people crucified him. And it's the same story. God is waiting for the right time to finally prevail over his enemies, but he could at any moment. And so you've got this battle between good and evil, and, and we humans, who are we going to give our allegiance to? And I think the warning is, some people say, I, I don't want to go all in for God. I don't want to go in and all in and follow Jesus and his instructions. But I also, I don't agree with those evil spirits. I'm not going in that way. But Peter's telling us it's one or the other. You can't just choose your own course. And these, maybe these false teachers were warned in this way and say, you are aligning yourself with dangerous and ungodly spirits. And that's going to cost you. There's a consequence to doing that. And they maybe their blasphemous, uh, their blasphemy is like, no, 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 no. I'm, I've got it all under control. Those, those fallen angels, they don't scare me. Uh, I can ignore God, and I don't have to be worried about the judgment. Remember, he said he held those the angels in gloomy chains, waiting for judgment. He destroyed the whole world. And they're saying, I don't have to be afraid of that. I've got my own way. It's going to work out. And that's this blasphemous arrogance. Think you're just, we're just humans. We're not anything more. Um, and these false teachers were warned, you're going down a dangerous path. And they ignored it. And uh, so they were trying to build themselves up. And then it said, these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant will also be destroyed in their destruction, suffering wrong as the wage for their wrongdoing. So these false teachers are trying to build a name for themselves, build themselves up. They don't want to submit to God's word and the prophets. They don't submit to warnings that you're going in a dangerous direction, aligning yourself with spirits, some of which are already in chains waiting to be judged. Uh, they're exploiting other humans. But instead of building themselves up and making themselves big and powerful, Peter's saying they're like irrational animals. They're actually going in the opposite direction. They're being reduced. They're just like creatures of instinct. A creature of instinct isn't thoughtful. It's just what comes naturally to him. That's what he does. And these false teachers and those who follow their ways, you're just, we're just doing what's natural. It's natural to be, the way humans are born now, it's natural to be against God and to go our own way. We've got to turn against our natural instincts, and we've got to submit to God. 
uh, the Bi Peter's saying they, they're like creatures that are just uh, born to be caught and destroyed. And they will be destroyed in their destruct destruction, suffering wrong for the wage of their wrongdoing. They're going to face the there's there's natural, natural consequences, consequences to turning against God. God. It's, it's not, not that God, God is vindictive and saying, all right, if you're not going to listen to me, then I'm going to zap you with my lightning bolt. bolt. There's, there's just, just a, a natural consequence to living away from, from God. God. Just, just like, like there's, there's a natural, natural consequence, consequence to hiding, hiding yourself in a cave and, and never seeing the sunlight. The sunlight. You're, not You're not gonna, gonna do, do well, well, right? Well, well it's, it's just, just a natural, natural consequence. consequence. When we hide away from God, God and we go our own way, there's, there's dangerous, dangerous and deadly consequences. consequences. And, and when, when we, we think, think about, about being these, these, these teachers, teachers and, and, and humans being creatures of instinct that are just against God, that makes me think we need rescued, right? We need turned from this. And, and so, so we've, we've got, got this comparison. comparison. We've, we've, we've plugged, plugged this thought into the whole book. book. Remember, Peter, Peter already gave us the promise of how we can take part in the divine nature. nature. Do we, we want to move, move towards the divine nature or be like a creature of instinct born to be caught and destroyed? destroyed? Those, are Those are totally opposite ends of the spectrum. spectrum. But, but Peter, Peter is saying who you listen to and who you submit to depends on which direction you're going. Describing, Describing these people, people they he, said, he says, says they, they count it pleasure to revel in the daytime. daytime. They don't even hide at night. They, they are, are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. So what, what Peter's, Peter's showing us is one of the consequences of not submitting to God's word and listening to false teachings, teachers of the day, if it doesn't match up with God's word, it's going to lead you into sin. Uh, many, uh, many of us, us may be tempted to say, I'm, I'm just going to choose a neutral path. path. But, but Peter is teaching us that, that cannot be done. done. The, the path you choose will lead either to godliness or to wickedness. wickedness. And, and this, this is this is, is where, where it will lead to. to. Uh, uh, reveling, reveling in the daytime, being a blot and a blemish. Reveling, reveling in their deceptions. deceptions. Enjoying, enjoying they, they, these false teachers... They're exploiting people, they're deceiving people, and they're reveling in it. So who you're listening to isn't your friend, unless it's a godly prophet, uh, in God's word, the prophecies, the prophets in God's word, or godly teachers, people that are grounded in the word of God. Who are we listening to? They, they revel in deceiving people while they feast with you. And this is why, I, this is why the warning is, is, is to us, they could be among us, they could be eating with us. Uh, it's, uh, not it's not the people, people way out there, it's the people, people in our lives. lives. And, and uh, uh, it, could it could be, be a people, people among us. us. So we've, we've got, got to be aware and alert. The, the, the instructions we're listening to, the advice we're listening to, does it come from God's word? He says, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They can't get enough sin. All right, None of us would say, that's what I want. I want to go and, and just get my fill of sin and want more and more of it. But Peter is warning us, you're on a path. You're going to go in one direction or the other. Maybe you're not there yet. But if you don't submit to God's word, if you don't plead to God to be rescued from what comes natural to yourself, this is inevitably where it will lead. You will get to where you want sin. And they entice unsteady souls. Remember, in chapter 1, he was talking about adding to adding godly characteristics to your faith. And one of them was add uh, knowledge and, and add to knowledge self-control and add to the self-control steadfastness. He, we, we, we need to add steadfastness because we've got false teachers out there that entice unsteady souls. We need to be steady. Otherwise, we'll be exploited and we will be led into sin. They have hearts trained in greed. They are accursed children. Remember in, at Christmas when we were looking at the offspring of the snake and the offspring of the woman. These are the offspring of the snake. They're accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. And this is the crux of the message here. You've got two ways, the right way or to go astray. And the Lord has just put on my heart, so many of us, we, we don't want to fully submit to God's word. And if you're not willing to do that, you are going astray. There is no neutral zone. There is a cosmic war between good and evil. 
the unholy, the unrighteous, and God and his followers. And there is no uh, demilitarized zone. You're in one territory or the other. And so this is a heavy warning for us to, to, to note. He says, they have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor. All right, so now he's giving an example from the Old Testament, the story of Balaam. If you want to read it, it's Numbers chapters 22 to chapters 25, the prophet Balaam. And it says, the son of Beor who loved gain from wrongdoing. But he was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. So to summarize that story that you can read in Numbers, Balaam was a prophet of God, and the children of Israel had been rescued out of Egypt, and they're moving in to the promised land. And all the kings are seeing this big nation moving in, and all the kings are getting a little nervous, like, what's going on here? A whole nation coming into our area. And Balak was the king of Moab, and Balak saw them coming, and so he said, I know there's a prophet named Balaam. The people he blesses are blessed. The people he curses are cursed. And so he's going to, I'm going to go hire him to curse this, these people that are coming into our area. And the children of Israel were, were so great, you couldn't even see them all at once. You had to go to one mountain, you could see one part of them, and you climb up on another mountain, you see another part of them. And then a third mountain, you see another part of them. So he goes to Balak, or he goes to Balaam, and he says, he offers him lots of money, and he says, come uh, curse these people. And uh, Balaam said, well, let me check with God. And God said, don't, don't, don't curse my people, <laughs> is what he said. And so Balaam said, even if you offer me a room full of treasures, I, I can't do it, because God says not to do it. And so Balak doesn't offer him more money, necessarily, but he sends more prestigious people. He sends more higher-ranking princes and more numbers of these, uh, these high-ranking princes to ask him again. And so Balaam says, well, let me ask again. He should never have asked again, but he said, let me ask again. And then God says, all right, if you want to, go, but you're only going to be able to say what I tell you to say. And, uh, and God was upset, angry with Balaam for being willing to go with the people. But and Peter says, these false teachers and people that follow their example, they're following the way of Balaam who loved gain from wrongdoing. He was willing to go do the wrong to try to curse God's people. And it wasn't, I think he might have been sincere. It wasn't about the money. It was about the prestige. This king was coming to him. He was sending higher and higher ranking princes and more and more high ranking officers and generals to go say, you come, please help us. And that appealed to him. He was gaining credit and face. And he's like, wow, I'll be this big, big shot. And he wanted to do it. And, uh, God, God did not, did not let, let, well, well so they're on their way to curse, curse Israel. Israel. And, and as, as Peter mentions, mentions, this donkey, a speechless donkey, donkey spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. So he, so he was, was on the path, path on his donkey. donkey. The donkey, donkey saw the angel of the Lord with a sword in the road and would not go any further. And so Balaam beats his donkey, makes him go forward, and the angel of the Lord moves farther down. The donkey stops again and... And uh, the donkey keeps trying to save Balaam's life from getting struck by the sword. Finally, he speaks and says, why have you done this to me? I've only been good to you. And Balaam says, well, because you're embarrassing me in front of these princes and generals. I can't even control my own donkey. And then the Lord opened his eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord with a sword. And he realized this donkey was pre keeping, saving my life. And what Peter is pointing out, Peter's referencing this story, saying these false teachers, they want to exploit people. They, they're not afraid of creatures, angelic creatures that are higher in glory and rank than them. They want to build themselves up and they become low like just animals. They become low so that just a speechless donkey of all creatures would rebuke this Balaam. He wanted to lift himself up and become great and impress kings and princes. And then, and then he couldn't he even couldn't control, control his own donkey. donkey. And then the donkey rebukes him. How embarrassing, right? And uh, that's, that's what, what Peter's Peter saying. saying. He's, he's, he's saying, saying people that follow the false teachers, they're, they're going, going the way of Balaam. They have, have the same, same motivation. motivation. 
I don't know what our tem you know, I know my temptation for gain. I don't know what your temptation for gain is. It's not necessarily money. But whatever it is, there's some kind there's something that we think we can gain. Maybe it's independence, maybe it's autonomy, maybe it's pleasure. There's something we think we can gain by going our own way by go departing from the way that God instructs us. And the warning is, it's madness. It's madness to do that. When you read the story of Balaam, if Peter hadn't have said this, you wouldn't think, oh, he's crazy. Um, but Peter's pointing out, when we depart from the way and we go after our own way, it is, it is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. How can we think that we'll get anything good when we leave the author of all goodness? When we try to, to interact with him on our terms, that's just not going to work. It's crazy. And so we need to be praying that God opens our eyes, just like God opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the danger he was headed towards, and he repented. But he still paid the consequences for his sin. We need to pray that God opens our eyes so we see the danger we're heading towards. We don't believe it's there. We don't see it. It's not right in front of us but it is down that path. And uh, so this fits in with Peter's teaching, and that's as far as we're going to get today is to verse 16. That we're gonna, there's some grave warnings about uh, false teachers we're going to look at next week. But I don't, let's not get too, too uh, focused on the false teachers beyond the warning that is very dangerous and it's deadly in every sense of the word. Let's not soften it. And also, in contrast to what God is calling us to, persevering in our faith, uh, adding godly qualities to our, to our faith, walking with God, this leads to joy. It leads to peace. We get actually take part in the, the um, nature of God. And so... I think what the, the benefit of this, what's so helpful with this, is that we got to lay it out in front of us, try to make it as plain to ourselves as we can. So when you're faced with some sin this week or this afternoon, and you're tempted to do it your way instead of God's way, that this image is in our mind. Like, this isn't just a little thing. Should I click on this view or not? Should I use these words with my wife or not? Um, it's not just a slow decision. It's... Which path am I going to go down? And one leads to destruction, and one leads to life. So let's consider these things um, as we continue studying Second Peter. Let's go ahead and stand together and uh, turn in our hymn books, if you want to, or the they're on stage, they're on uh, the screen as well. Uh, hymn number 480, if you'd like to look in your book. Only trust him. Let's go ahead and sing this song together.
Bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we've, we've heard your word. We've met together with our brothers and sisters, our family here at Olney. Lord, help us to take your word and the message that you have given to us out into the world. May we tell everybody the good news that we have heard today. Be with us throughout this week. Help guide and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>